That is if you're born again. You've been bought with a price. And you're not your own. The Lord owns you. You are the temple of the Lord. And so many people want to understand, they want to, they want to know, how do I get the glory of God in this temple? How do I, how do I, how do I explain the glory of God? How do I get the glory of God to move in, in my life? And how do I get God to move for me? Well, we need to understand what they did in the in the Bible days. Do you know what the man of the is? Somebody, do you know what the man of Elijah is? Won't you stand and please and give the Lord a big praise off on this morning? Amen. Can you praise him this morning? Amen. Can you praise him this morning? Amen. You know what the man of Elijah is? See, Elijah knew that he was the temple of God. He knew that God was on him, in him, and around him. Listen to him. Everywhere Elijah went, he had the man of Elijah. He had a man. A man was, it was somewhat like a cape that he wore around him, like a robe thing that he wore around him. And Elijah was a man of God, and the power of God was in, was in that man. And everywhere people seen Elijah, and they seen the man that was on his life. See, they had to have something that they could physically see in the Old Testament. But today, the man that God wraps around you cannot be physically seen, but it can be felt. You can't feel, you can't see the wind, but you can feel the wind. You hear what I'm saying? I, mean, I can't help but remember what Elijah done when he came to the river of Jordan. And the Bible says he took and he wrapped his mouth together. Come on, church. He took and he wrapped his mouth and the Bible says he smoked in the waters. And the waters went hither and hither. And as the water was going hither and hither, I could just see him throwing that man back upon his shoulder. And him and Elisha going across. Hallelujah, the river. Oh, going across on dry ground. Praise the Lord. I can just see today that when we approach something that looks like it's too big for us, that God the Father comes down to the Holy Ghost. And
We admire that they was at the place of dedication of the house of the Lord. We admire that they wanted to dedicate the house of the Lord. But we find here in the scriptures, it says, it says now when Solomon had made an end of prayer. Somebody said prayer. Somebody underline that. Now, when Solomon had made the end of praying, underline it. I want you to focus on it. I want you to meditate on it. That word pray, when Solomon had made the end of praying, church, before you can get the fire of God in your life, you've got to have a prayer life. Amen. You've got to be a temple of praise. You gotta be a temple that is praying before God. How many times did you pray this week? How many times did you have a communication with God? You know what I done this morning? Sister Wiggins, I got up and I knelt down at my altar in my closet. And I know that ain't what the Bible means, but I like to be there because I'm by myself and nobody's with me but me and God. You know, you hear me? I kneeled down there and I prayed. I said, Lord, I know I ain't got a lot of time to pray this morning, but I'm going to kneel down and reverence you as king. Amen. King of this, of this tabernacle. King and Lord. Hallelujah, Prince. Hallelujah, Prince of Princes. Hallelujah. I said, Lord, I want you to know that I recognize that you are a prophet, priest, and a king. Hallelujah. Did you know that Jesus is a prophet? priest and a king. Praise the Lord. Oh, church. I said, Lord, I want you to know that I'm going to get up this morning and I'm going to communicate with you. And I want to communicate with you for the rest of this day. I said, but I want to kneel my knee down and I'm going to pray just a few minutes. I said, but God, I'm not going to say amen. I'm going to get up and I want to continue this conversation. And you know, church, me and God is still having a conversation all the way through getting ready for church this morning. All the way from going from the house to the church. Hallelujah. All the way from preaching. Oh, right now preaching to you today. Me and God is still communicating. Hallelujah. I'm glad to know today that I have the battle of Elijah. Hallelujah. That's around me today. I'm glad to know that whenever I pray for somebody, oh, that same battle through the Holy Ghost, which you cannot see, it begins to smoke to whatever it is that's in our way and God begins to touch us. What I'm trying to tell you today, church, you can't get the fire to come down in the dedication of the building until you get to the place that you understand that you got a prayer God. we got to have a prayer God. And the Bible says that when he ended praying, the Bible says the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled the house. And when all the children of Israel saw that the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves oh, with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. What I'm trying to tell you today, church, I'm not coming to you in my own power. I'm not coming today trying to fill up a church. I ain't trying to hold the preach to the multitude. I'm just trying to preach to somebody. I want you to know if you got a prayer institute a prayer life in your life. He says when you get up and you stand up on your feet, you'll turn around and the fire of God will come down in your life. And the fire of God will cause you to worship God no matter what you're going through. You may be going through bankruptcy. You may be going through a bill a situation. You may be going through some kind of family situation. You may be going through some kind of health situation. But isn't it amazing that you can be stricken with cancer and still praise the Lord? Isn't it amazing? Hallelujah. You can be laying on your bed and as long as you can twitch something, you'll still shout it. Hallelujah. Do you hear what I'm saying, church? When the fire of the Lord is in you, you will shout no matter what. I'm here to tell you today, church, we need to understand that God wants to come down inside of you like a fire. Thank you.
He said, get a prayer God about you. He said, get the worship in you. Hallelujah. And let it come out of you. And the Bible says that then the king and all the people, and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 20 and 2,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of the Lord of God. What I'm trying to tell you today, church, if we want God to come in this temple and we want God to move inside of us, we've got to start listening to God and still man. We've got to have a prayer You 
Thank you. 
instruments of music of the Lord, which David the king had made to praise the Lord, because his mercy endured forever. When David praised by their ministries, the priest sounded a trumpet. Ha! Oh, church, let me tell you something. The high priest, Jesus Christ, is about to sound the trumpet. Oh, Sister Wiggins, and one of these days, we're going to stand up on our feet, the Bible said, and they sound the trumpet, and the they begin to stand up on their feet, and all of Israel stood in church. What I'm trying to tell you today, church, if we want the glory of God to come in our lives, we got to listen to what God is telling us to do. we got to have a prayer life. we got to have worship. we got to have giving. we got to have a way in Wait on your ministry. Wait on what God wants you to do. And God will put you where He wants you to be. And God will manifest Himself through you, church. I'm here to tell you today. Uh, I used to worry about if somebody liked my preaching or not. Today I don't give a flip if they do or not. All I need is the anointing. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing. Hallelujah. They try to leave it. And a woman called me just a few weeks ago. You know where she called me from? Pathways. West Tennessee. Pathways. Medical Hospital. All I'd done was to beat the devil off of her. I said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Where is the Lord God that came down and smoked in the waters? Solomon, that when he began to end his prayer, that the fire came down and burned the offering up. Where is the Lord God that demonstrated in the Old Testament? And I begin to speak into her life, and the devils had to leave her. And she delivered even to this day. Give the Lord praise. She called me last night. She called me last night. Offerings. 
if you really wanted to know the truth about the Old Testament. So God gives us symbolically through us today. He, he, he manifests Himself out of us. He speaks into your heart and He tells you to give all kinds of offerings. He offerings of time, offerings of money, all different kinds of offerings. Give them unto the Lord and speak it and do it when God tells you to do it and you will be blessed. When everybody else is walking in poverty, you will be still going. Come on, church. When everybody else is going broke, you'll still be you'll still be on top of the water, walking on the water. As long as you don't look at the water and the wind and the waves, you'll keep on walking water. But as long as you look at the enemy and keep doing what you're doing, you're going to sink every time. And I'm so sick of this world that we're living in. These carnal minded creatures getting up and telling
into his uh, Cain into Solomon's heart. Wow. Into his heart. You need to hear that. Thus, Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make the Lord. And in his own house, God didn't leave him out. God let him make, God let him make the house of the Lord and his own house. God never leaves his people out. Praise the Lord. And he prosperously affected. It, it was, he was prosperously. He was prosperous. He was full of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. See, God goes to raise you up to be wise as servants. But harmless as does. He wants you to learn to outthink the serpent. See? God knows who you are. He knows you're a kid. I pray right now that I feel the presence of the Lord. I pray right now that God will search you and search your heart and your intents. <coughs> he knows you. He's very invisible. And yet, he's very invisible. Isn't it amazing how sometimes you can't speak of what God shows you?
Bible says in verse 12, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. I've heard thy prayers. I've been there with you. I've heard thy prayers. He said, he says, if I shut the heavens and there be no rain, if I command the locusts to devour the land or, or pestilence to be among my people, he said, if my people which are called by my name, he said, all these things may come and all the heavens may shut and all these things may come. He said, but if my people, my people, your people, you people, my he said, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray for the green. He said, I, I will hear from heaven. Well, praise the Lord. That means God hears. He's got ears to hear. Oh, praise the Lord. Let me tell you something. He said, I will hear from heaven. He said, no. He said, I will forgive your sin. He said, I will deal with the heart issue first. And then he said, I will go deeper into you and deal with the heart issue. And he said, then I will heal your land. Then I will make you prosperous. Then I will make you live in houses that you did not build. I will let you have birds. Oh, and you will eat food that you did not even go out. Oh, church, what I'm trying to tell you today is we got to get to He goes on in verse 15. And I'm about to close. He goes on in verse 15. He says, My eyes shall be open my, and my ears alert unto the prayers that is made in this place. He said, I'm looking at you. I'm listening for you. He says, This is symbolic even to the day. I know this was a, a type and a shadow. This is the Old Testament. And they had to act it out. But now all we got to do is obey. All we got to do is listen to the Lord. The Lord said, For now I have chosen to sanctify this house that my name may be there forever. You go along in verse 17. He says, And, and, and as of thee, Talking about some. As of thee, if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shalt uh, observe my statutes and my judgments. That word statute means commandments. My statutes and my judgments. Then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom according as I have covenanted with David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man to, to rule in Israel. Hallelujah. But listen to this. I told you about all the blessings. How that if you want the blessing of God in the temple of God, you got to obey. You got to have a prayer life. You got to worship. You got to give. You got to listen to the inward voice into the heart of hearts. And God will appear to you by night or by day or somehow or another. God will appear to you and show you how He wants things done and He will establish you. He will establish who you are, where you're at, what you're doing. But if you are a walk away Joe, God can't establish a walk away Joe. Every time God tries to establish some people, even in this church and other churches, God tries to establish you. And you become a walk away Joe. And when God tries to get you 
you establish, you already walk away from what God tried to establish you of. Listen, the reason some of you ain't getting your prayers answered is because you're full of fear. You don't have a prayer life. You don't read your Bible. You don't serve God. Really, all you do is know him. You're an acquaintance. You're not, you're not family. You're just an acquaintance. He, he, you know him when you hear his name. You know him when somebody talks about him. But when you know God, you're more than a prince. You begin to be married to him in the spirit. And God begins to show you how his fire comes down inside of you. And he begins to establish your church. He goes on in verse 19. He says, but if you turn away and forsake and forsake, forsake my statutes and my commandments. Listen to this. He says, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them. What is America doing? What is America doing? The worship in other gods. That's why you church houses. You know, do you know all you good church houses? Go, go try one out with some. You ain't going to hear no loud mouth preaching for about a half hour or an hour. You're going to hear about a 15 minute sermon how, to, how you're blessed and you know, everything you just about to do. And they're going to hold the reins back on the Holy Ghost because they sure don't nobody get saved or get delivered. Yeah, they want them to get saved. They want them, that, but they don't want them to be delivered. They, they, I'm telling you, church, I sit down there at the ballpark and I listen to some of the people that go there. This one man said, well, I go to this certain, certain, certain church in Murfreesboro because they have about an hour of singing and the preacher preaches about 15, 20 minutes and we're out of there. We don't even have an altar call. But they can go down to the ballpark and they can sit down there half an hour watching their kids play ball and they can go down and do whatever they want to do. Don't tell me you can't come to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Don't tell me you can't be the dead, dedicated to God. Let me tell you something. You may not ever come back again, but I'm going to tell you today. Hallelujah, church. You're wicked and you don't know God. If you're full of fear, you got to stand up and begin to pray. But I want to tell you something. If you can make it to church and you're sitting home in your, in your seat of do nothing and you're sitting home, now you can at least go to church and help your pastor pray that we can win this city. Oh, to the Lord. Oh, God, I don't want to lose none of you. But I want to tell you this right now. Hey, we got to get dedicated to the Lord. I don't think you're going to receive anything of the Lord. If you can't worship God.
He said, you forsake me, that I, he said, I've set the things before you, Ooh, that I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them. Then will I cut them up by the roots out of the land which I have given them. I will pluck you up out of the roots and out of the land which I have given them. And this house which I have established for my name, I will, I will cast out of my sight and will make it to be what? A proverb. A proverb. And what? among all the nations. And this house which is high shall be astonished and astonished for everyone that passes by. So that he shall say, Why has the Lord done thus unto this land? And unto this house and it shall be answered. See, God gives answers. And it shall be answered because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them from uh, brought them from uh, forth out of the land of Egypt, who laid hold of other gods and worshipped them and served them. Therefore, hath he brought all this evil upon them? He, who's he? God. God allowed it to happen. You go and you serve your God. And you do what you want to do. But all you're going to become is a proper and a Bible. Because you've done what you wanted to do. We got to do what God wants us to do. When God speaks to your heart, see, when God spoke to Solomon's heart, he done it. That's why God appeared to Solomon. God wants us to do what he tells us to do. What did Samuel tell? Saul, when Saul kept Agag, the king alive, and all the sheep and, and all the good of the animals, killed everybody, slew them all. They kept the king alive and kept all the sheep and the animals alive. And the prophet Samuel said, What is that I'm hearing bleed in my ear? What is that I'm hearing? Should I hear nothing? Oh, I've pleased the Lord. I've slain everybody. I've utterly destroyed them all. And I've kept Agag. And the animals alive. Instead of listening to the Lord through the man of God. Listen, back then you, you listened to the man of God and you paid the consequences. Now you listen to God or you pay the consequences. God has invited you to listen to him this morning. God has told you what to do. It's in your word. It's in the word. It's in the word of God. God wants us to be walking, talking, living words of God. So uh, Samuel said, Have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as, uh, as in Obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than the sacrifice, and to hearken than uh, the fat. Uh, you know, it, it's, he, he begins to say, he says, Obedience is better than the sacrifice. It's better than the sacrifice. And when God tells you to do something, and you don't do it, the Bible says, For, for uh, it's, it's, it begins, it becomes rebellion. It, God, you know, He will, He comes into your life. Rebellion is as sin of witchcraft. 
And stubbornness is as a nicotine in an idolatry. Somebody says, well, I'm just stubborn. <laughs> well, you're full of witches. Witch. You're full of idolatry. Iniquity and idolatry. A stubborn, hard person, the Bible says, is full of uh, iniquity and idolatry. Am I preaching this right, Brother Bill? He says, he says, rebellion is as sin. Means when God tells you to do something and you don't do it, you have sinned against God. Thank God we got amazing grace that we can run to the altar and say, Lord, forgive me. Back then they didn't have that. All they had was their burnt offering and it just it just laid it off for another year. Their debt was piling up on them. Today, church, if you don't know Jesus Christ, or if you know Jesus Christ and, and you ain't listening to the still small voice that's telling you to do something, somebody says, How do I know God's telling me to do it? Because it's kind of like God yanks on your heart every day. Sister Milly didn't ask me to come and pray for her, but God yanked on my heart. He's still yanking on my heart. I'm going. When God yanks on your heart, church, it's time to listen to the voice of the Lord. Listen to God. God bless you. Stubbornness is as iniquity in thy doctrine. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath rejected thee from being king. And I'm going to make one more statement. Come here, brother. Come here. Solomon. This is, we're going to say this is Saul. Saul was begging Samuel to pray with him. Samuel grabbed a hold of his mouth. When he tore, Samuel looked back and he says, Today the Lord has rent the kingdom from you. Disobedience can call you to be rent. Cut out of the world. He said, I'll cut you a son. He said the man went back. He said the Lord has delayed his coming. He went back to his dragon and he smiled his brother. And, and the Bible says that the Lord came when he thought not. And the Bible says when he came, he cut him asunder.
A lot of times people don't realize it. But it's God who puts you here. God wants to take you to the next level. But you can't be a walk away Job and serve your own God. Look at the next level. You can't be stubborn to go to the next level. You gotta be powerful. You gotta do unto your brothers as you would have done unto yourself. You need to love the unlovable. You know, think that ain't a hard thing to do, but sometimes it is. And you cannot do it without Jesus. You can't love the unlovable. Without Jesus. You must stand here.